The programs you write in this course are going to follow a similar structure, which we'll take a look at in this video. We'll also take a look at the Intro CS library, which gives us some tools we can use to make our apps more interesting. We'll begin by opening VS Code and being sure that we are in the course workspace. We'll open up the File Explorer and we should see a source folder followed by the welcome project and the welcome app, which I'm gonna open up here. If you did not see that, check out the previous video on how to open up the course workspace. I'm gonna go ahead and hide my file explorer so that I have more room for my code editor. And we need to begin our development environment. So I'll go to the view menu and select terminal. And the first command that we need to run is npm run pull. This ensures that we have the latest materials we need for our exercises. That will take a second to run. And once it's done, we will run npm start. This begins our development server. Here on the right-hand side, I've arranged Chrome so that it's beside my code editor and I can see both at the same time. In future videos, we won't walk through these steps each time. We'll assume that this is something you're now able to do. I'm gonna go ahead and close my terminal. And there's a difference between closing and stopping my, my terminal. By hiding this panel, I'm still running my development server and everything still works. So here we have a simple application called Welcome App. And there are seven lines of code here, which include some ideas which we haven't talked about yet. So let's start from the top and take a look at what this program's doing. So the very first line you're seeing here is pulling in this print function from the intro CS library. Print is a function we can call to send output to the screen. So when I navigate to my application in the development server, we see that when this line of code runs, print hello world, it results in some output in my web browser. Hello world is printed to my screen. We'll see that there are other things that we can import from the intro CS library. And what this line of code is doing is it's saying, we are going to make use of this function. And when the program later reaches a reference to that function, it knows where to look for what to do when that function is called. So the definition of the print function is in intro CS. When TypeScript reaches this line, it says, I don't know what print is. Oh, I imported it from intro CS. I'm gonna go look there for what the steps I need to follow in order to make this happen. The next series of lines is the definition of what we call the main function. The main function is an important function in your programs because it signifies the starting point. This is where our program is going to begin. The first thing that happens when our program runs is this line of code is going to be executed. The structure of this definition, like this export keyword, this async keyword, these parentheses, this forward arrow. We're not gonna get into the details of those yet. The important thing to know is that the things that you want your program to do when we're working in a stored program are going to exist between the curly braces of the main function. The things that are going to run are between these two curly braces. The very last line of code is an important one. You'll always see this line at the end of a file that has a main function in it. So we can make a note of this using a comment. This should always be the last line in a file with a main function defined. And what this is, is called a function call. We'll learn all about this in a video very soon. But this function call is saying, all right, now that all of the definitions have happened and you've told me everything we need for this program to work, this very last line is saying, all right, I'm gonna start this program by going up to the main function and entering it and following what's inside of this main function line by line by line. How can we write a program that asks the person using the program for their name and greets them? So rather than saying hello world, says so something like hello name. Well, we could begin by declaring a variable like let name be a variable that is say Chris or your name. And what we want this program to do is say hello and then we will concatenate that string with the name of the person using this program. When I made these changes, I'm going to save them with the shortcut Command S on Mac, Control S on Windows. And you'll notice that it says, hello, Chris. How might we make this program such that, that the program would ask, what is your name? And then say, hello, followed by their name. In order to do that, we need to prompt the user for some input. So why don't we import the prompt string function from intro CS? The way that we import additional functionality is we add a comma to this import line followed by prompt string. And these are both within the curly braces of this import. So we're saying not only are we importing the print functionality from intro CS, but also this prompt string function. 
Now that we have imported the prompt string function, we can make use of it. So we will say await the result of prompting the user for some input, prompt string. And the question we want to ask the user is, what is your name? Okay. So when I save this, what we'll see is now when this program runs, we are prompting the user for some input. And if I enter my name, like say Michael Scott, and press enter, now when this line runs, we are awaiting the user to type some input. And as soon as they press enter or OK with a string input, name is assigned to that result. And on the very next line, we're saying print out the result of concatenating hello with whatever name was typed in. The intro CS library provides three functions to prompt for input, prompt string, prompt number, and prompt boolean. Each is going to ask the user to enter a specific data type. To use these, you'll have to do exactly what we just did. If you wanted to prompt for a number instead of a string, you would have to add that function import to the import line. So comma prompt number. When prompting, the program must await the user's input. We are blocking or we're pausing the program at a certain point. We're saying, all right, don't continue on further in our program until the result of this function is known. And so we're awaiting prompt number, what is your age? This would ask the user, what is your age? And as soon as they typed in a number and pressed OK, that value would be assigned to the age variable and the program would continue on. Using prompts like these, we can write applications that don't have all of their data hard-coded into them, but allow the user to give data when the program is running. We'll make use of this to start building more interesting applications.